In this lesson, we're going to learn how to put an HTML website onto the internet so that other people can view our website. We're also going to learn how to set up a domain name for our website, like mywebsite.com. To follow along, you just need to know the basics of HTML and CSS. If you need help with that, I have a full course in the description. With that said, let's get started. Usually, when we create a website, we create some HTML and CSS files, like this. Now, one way to view this website is to open the HTML file in our browser. The problem with this is that other people can't view this website because it's only on our computer. In order for other people to view this website, we need to put it on the internet. So how do we do that? There's actually many ways to put a website on the internet, but the best way for beginners is to use a service called GitHub Pages. GitHub Pages is a free service that we can use to put websites on the internet. It's really easy to use and it helps us follow best practices when setting up our website. So what we'll do is we're first gonna use GitHub Pages to put a website on the internet and then we'll learn in more detail about how this process works. So let's go to our computer and we're gonna learn how to use GitHub Pages together. And also don't worry about taking notes. I created a reference of everything that we learned in this video that you can find in the description. We're gonna start off on our computer and we're going to open our web browser. And then we're going to go to github.com. So to use GitHub Pages, we're gonna need a GitHub account. If you already have one, make sure you log in. If you don't, you can go through their signup process and create a new account. And once you created a new account, make sure you log in to your GitHub account. So once we've logged into GitHub, we're going to go to the top right corner here. We're gonna click our icon and we're gonna click your repositories. Now a repository is basically like a folder and this is where we're gonna upload our HTML and CSS files for our website. So let's create a new repository. So we create a new website. And now we're gonna fill in the details for our new repository. So we're gonna add a repository name. Now this name doesn't really matter. It's just for you to identify which repository this is. So I'm just gonna call it super simple dash website. And feel free to call it something else if you'd like. The other option that we have to check is we wanna make sure our repository is public. GitHub Pages is only free if you have a public repository. If you choose a private repository, you're gonna to have to pay a fee to use the service. And finally, we can leave all of these other options to the default, and we can click Create Repository at the bottom. All right, after we created our repository, the next step is to upload all of our website's code into this repository. But first, we'll need a website to practice with. If you have your own website that you wanna use, feel free to use that. Otherwise, I've linked a sample website in the video description. This is actually the YouTube clone that we built in the HTML and CSS full course. So if we wanna use a sample website, we can open this link, click this code dropdown, and then click download zip. Now, once that's done, we can unzip it, and that will give us the code that we can practice with. The next step is to upload all of our code to our GitHub repository. So let's go back to our GitHub repository and we're gonna click this upload an existing file link. If you don't see this, you can also add slash upload at the end of the URL at the top here. Now, all we have to do is drag and drop all of the code for our website down here. So if you're using your own project, make sure to use that. For me, I'm gonna use the project that I downloaded earlier. So there's one thing we have to be careful of here. So if I go back, all of my code is in this folder. Now, what I don't want to do is to drag and drop this folder down here. This will create an unnecessary extra folder in our GitHub repository. What we actually wanna do is to open this folder and then select all of our code and then drag all of the code into here. So that'll take a few moments for all of our code to upload. So once all of our code has finished uploading, you should be able to see all of your files down here. So we're gonna scroll down to the very bottom and we're gonna click Commit Changes. So now all of our website's code has been uploaded to GitHub and we're ready to put this on the internet. To do that, we're gonna use GitHub Pages. So to access that, we're gonna to go to the settings of our repository here, and then we're gonna go down to this Pages tab. 
Now to set up GitHub pages, we're going to go to this dropdown and we're going to click main. You might see a different word here like master, just pick the option that's not none. So I'm going to click main. For the second dropdown, I can leave it as the default and then I can click save. So once I do that, GitHub pages is going to take all of our code and then publish them onto the internet. Now this process might take a couple minutes, so we just have to wait for GitHub to finish doing its thing. So after a few minutes, we should be able to refresh the page here. And now it should say that our site is published at this URL. So that means the website that we had has now been published to the internet. And now anyone can access it by going to this URL in their browser. If you don't see this here, you can also access it using your GitHub username .github.io slash your repository name. Now we're going to open this in our browser. So I have the link here and I'm going to right click and then open link in new tab. And now if I open that tab, you'll see that we have a 404 page. So don't worry, this is normal and we'll figure out how to fix this in just a bit. What we actually want to do is we're going to go into the URL here and we're going to type an HTML file that we want to open. So if I go back to my repository and I look at my code, I have a few HTML files here. The main HTML file for the website is called youtube.html. So I'm going to type that in and open that in the browser. If you're using your own website, make sure you type in the HTML file that you're using. So I'll go back to my website here and then I'm going to type in youtube.html and press enter. And that's it. We successfully took a website that we created with HTML and CSS and put it on the internet. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about how this process works. So let's go back to our GitHub repository and we're going to take a look at the HTML code in this project. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click youtube.html and I'm going to look at this code here. So in this code, we're loading some CSS files. So here we're loading a file called styles general.css. So if this was on our computer, we would expect there to be a styles folder beside this HTML file. And then inside there would be a general.css file. Now, if we go back to our repository, so if I click up here, you'll also notice that we have a styles folder and inside we have a file called general.css. So this means that our GitHub repository works the exact same way as our computer. We load CSS files the same way. We also load images the same way and pretty much everything else works the same as if it's on our computer. So because everything works the same, here is all we have to do to publish our website onto the internet. First, we write our HTML and CSS code on our computer as normal. And then when we're done, we just upload that code to a GitHub repository and GitHub will take care of the rest and put that website on the internet. Now, the last thing we're going to cover in this section is if we go back to our website. So remember that if we didn't have a file at the end here, so if I remove this HTML file and press enter, we get a 404 page. I'm going to explain what this means and how we can fix it. So when we type a file at the end of this URL, like youtube.html, we're telling GitHub pages to load this youtube.html file. However, if we don't specify any file, this actually looks for a file called index.html. So this URL is actually a shortcut for slash index.html. And if we go back to our repository and I click here, you'll notice that we actually don't have an index.html file. So that's why it's showing a 404 page telling us the file is not found. So to fix this, all we have to do is to add an index.html file into our repository. So for this example, I actually want my youtube.html to be the home page so that if I don't type this in here, it will still load youtube.html. So all we have to do is go back into our repository and rename youtube.html to index.html. So I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to click edit this file. And then up here, I'm going to change the name to index.html. And now I'm going to scroll down 
and press commit changes to save these changes. So again, it's going to take a couple minutes for GitHub to publish these changes onto the internet, so we just have to wait for it to finish. After a few moments, this should be finished, so we're going to go to our website, and we're going to click refresh. And now we should be loading our YouTube homepage without having to specify youtube.html in the URL. So in this lesson, we learned how to take a website that we created with HTML and CSS code, and then put that on the internet using GitHub pages. For now, here are some exercises you can do on your own to practice using GitHub pages. In this section, we're going to learn how to set up a domain name for our website, like mywebsite.com. This is going to make it a lot easier for people to access our website because they can type in the domain name into the browser instead of that URL that GitHub Pages gives us. So there are two steps to this process. The first step is to get a domain name, and the second step is to link our domain name to GitHub Pages. Let's start with getting a domain name. Now, if you already have one that you want to use, feel free to skip to this time in the video. Otherwise, we're going to learn how to get a new domain name. To get a new domain name, we need to buy one from a company called a domain registrar. So these are companies that are certified to sell domain names. Now domain names are not free, but they're also not expensive. For example, a domain ending in .com usually costs about $10 to $15 a year. And once you register a domain name, that name is now taken, so other people can't register it. That's why we can't take youtube.com anymore. So now that we understand domain registrars, which one should we use? The domain registrar that I recommend the most is a company called Namecheap. This is actually what I use for all of my websites. I find that they have the best prices and their website is the easiest to use. So that's why I recommend them. To go to Namecheap, you can click this link in the video description. To be transparent, this is my affiliate link. This means if you buy your first domain name through this link, it won't cost you anything extra, but Namecheap will give me about $2 to $3. So this is a great way to support this channel without any extra cost to you. Thanks so much. So now we're going to go into Namecheap and we're going to learn together how to purchase a domain name. To go to Namecheap, you can click this link in the description. Now, once we're on the homepage, we're going to go into this section called domains and we're going to click up here. And then in this text box here, we can search for a domain name that we like. So keep in mind that we can't take a domain name that has already been registered. For example, if I search in here for youtube.com and I search, obviously youtube.com has already been registered and it's going to tell me that I can't take this domain. So we're going to have to come up with something that hasn't been taken before. You want to pick something that's related to what your website is about. Now, if you're not really sure what that is yet, one suggestion that I have is to take your first name, last name.com. This is really useful if you want to have a personal website when you're looking for jobs, for example. So for me, I'm going to search for my first name, which is Simon, and my last name, bao.com. Now, depending on what your name is, this may or may not be taken. If it has not been taken, you can go ahead and add it to your cart. Otherwise, if it has been taken, like you see here, we have a couple options. The first option is to change the .com to something else. So another popular one is .net. And if I search for that, you'll see that we can add this to the cart. Now, if you want to stick with .com, you're going to have to change something in the front here. So for example, I'm going to add the word dev because I'm a developer. So once I add that, you can see that Simon Bao Dev is available and I'm going to add this to my cart. So take a few moments to come up with a domain name that you like and then add it to your cart and then we'll continue. So once you've picked a domain name that you like, we can go to our cart up here and we're going to click view cart. And we can usually leave all these options as the default. Just make sure that you have domain privacy enabled. Otherwise, you're going to get spammed. So after we checked everything here and it looks good, we're going to confirm our order. So at this point, you're going to have to create a Namecheap account. We need this account because later on, we're going to manage our domain name and link it to GitHub pages. So make sure you go through their signup process and create a Namecheap account and then log in to your account. 
So once you've created a Namecheap account and you've logged in, we can go back to our cart here. We're going to click view cart and then confirm our order. And then here we're going to have the checkout page. So just make sure that everything looks okay and click pay now to register your new domain. And that's it. We successfully registered our domain name. Now to view our domain name, we can go back to the homepage here and we're going to go into our account and we're going to go into the dashboard. And now if we look inside our dashboard, you should see the new domain name that we just purchased. So now that we have a domain name, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to link our domain name to our GitHub pages. Now, before we can learn how to do that, we actually need to learn a little bit about how the internet works. When we open our browser and we visit our GitHub pages website, how exactly does this work? So first of all, on GitHub side, they are running a web server. A web server is just a piece of software that we run on our computer. You probably used a web server before if you use the code editor VS Code. The VS Code extension Live Server basically runs a web server on our own computer. But in this case, GitHub is running a web server on their computers. So what exactly does a web server do? The main thing is that it can communicate with a browser. By typing in a URL in the browser, we can ask the web server for a certain file. For example, if I type in slash youtube.html, the web server will give us back that HTML file. If I type in slash styles slash header.css, the web server will give us back that CSS file. And that's pretty much it. Our browser can ask the web server for files. If we happen to get back an HTML file, it will display the website instead of giving back the text of the file. However, web servers are just software, which means they need a computer to run on. So on GitHub side, they have a computer that runs their web server. This computer that's running the web server is called a host. If you've heard of a web hosting company, this company basically provides you with computers to run your web server. Now the next concept we have to understand is IP addresses. Every device that connects to the internet, whether it's your computer or your phone or GitHub's computer, is given an IP address. An IP address is basically a phone number, except it's for the internet. So just like how you can contact someone else using their phone number, your device can contact another device across the internet using an IP address. And IP addresses are unique. So an IP address looks something like this or something like this. This is IP version 4 and this is IP version 6. We have version 6 because we're sort of running out of IP addresses for version 4. It's kind of like how we run out of phone numbers. Now the final piece to this puzzle of how our browser is able to contact GitHub is that we need to link our domain name to GitHub's IP address. We can set up a link between a domain name and an IP address inside our domain registrar, or where we bought our domain name from. After we set this up, we can type in the domain name into our browser, and now our browser is going to contact the IP address that is linked to that domain. So basically, our computer is going to be contacting GitHub's host, and as well, GitHub's web server, and that's how we get our files from GitHub pages. So basically, in order to make all of this work, we just need to set up this link between our domain name and GitHub pages IP address. This link is called a DNS record or a domain name system record. So now we're gonna learn together how to set up a DNS record inside our domain registrar. The first step is to go to our domain registrar and log in. So I'm using Namecheap, but make sure to go to the domain registrar that you're using. As a reminder, your domain registrar is the website where you bought your domain name from. And don't worry if you're using another domain registrar. The process is very similar, and you should be able to follow along with this video. Just in case, I have left instructions for other domain registrars in the description. So on Namecheap, I'm going to go up here and click Account, and I'm going to log in. Once we've logged in, we're going to go into the settings for our domain name. For Namecheap, we can go to the domain list here, and then scroll down and find the domain name that we want to use, and then click Manage. And finally, we're going to go to the Advanced DNS tab here. And we're going to scroll down, and we're going to look for a table that looks like this. If you're not using Namecheap, don't worry, the process is very similar. You just need to go to the settings for your domain name, and then look for a table that looks like this. 
If you need help, you can search in Google, manage DNS records, and then your domain registrar. I also have a link in the description with instructions for other domain registrars. So this table allows us to create DNS records for our domain name. So as a reminder, we're going to create a DNS record to link our domain name to an IP address. So first, I'm going to click Add New Record here. And now we're going to fill in the values for our DNS record. Don't worry if this looks different for you. DNS records take the same four basic values. The first value we're going to fill out is the type. So DNS records can link different types of information to a domain. To link an IP address, we're going to use an A record. Next, we're going to set the TTL. So TTL stands for time to live. This basically says that if we change our DNS records, how long does it take to update across the internet? A short TTL means the DNS changes will be updated very quickly. A long TTL means that it will be updated more slowly. Long TTLs are a little bit more efficient, but for this example, we're going to select five minutes. Now, if your domain registrar doesn't have a dropdown like this, you're gonna enter the value 300, which is 300 seconds or five minutes. And now we have two values remaining. We're gonna start with the first one here. This is called the subdomain. A subdomain is basically the part of a URL in front of a domain name. This is useful if you wanna have multiple websites under the same base domain name. For example, youtube.com is used for watching videos and then studio.youtube.com is a separate website for managing your channel. In our example, we don't really want a subdomain, so we're gonna leave this as blank. On Namecheap, to leave it as blank, we have to type at. But for other domain registrars, you can probably leave it as blank. Now the last value that we have to give it is the IP address that we want to link to this domain name. Recall that we want to link our domain name to the IP address of GitHub Pages. So first of all, how do we find GitHub Pages IP address? To do that, we're gonna to go to a new tab and we're gonna search for DNS lookup. And then we're gonna scroll down and go to this website. So this tool allows us to search for a domain name and see which IP addresses are currently linked to it. So over here, we're gonna type in our GitHub username. So for me, that's super simple dev-tester1, and then we're going to type .github.io. So if you recall, this is the domain that GitHub Pages gives us by default for our website. So now I'm going to click here for DNS lookup, and it's going to show me the IP addresses that are associated with GitHub Pages. So what we need to do is to take these IP addresses and create a DNS record for each of them. So let's go through the first one together. I'm going to click this IP address and then I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in this DNS records table. Just paste it here and then I'm going to click done. And now our first DNS record has been created. Don't worry if the other records disappear. Those are just the defaults that Namecheat gives us if we don't have any other records. So finally, we're going to create DNS records for the other three IP addresses that we see here. So feel free to pause the video and do it yourself for practice. Otherwise, I'm gonna fast forward and we can move on to the next step. Once we're finished, we should have some DNS A records that link to the IP addresses of GitHub pages. The last thing we need to do here is to set up a particular subdomain called www. Now, technically, this is not actually necessary, and what we have here will still work, but this is recommended by GitHub Pages. There are also some technical reasons for setting up the www subdomain, but they're too advanced for this video, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read more. To set up the www subdomain, we're going to go and create a new record, and this time, instead of selecting an A record, we're going to scroll down and select the C name record. So what is the CNAME record? An A record basically links a domain name to an IP address, while a CNAME record links a domain name to another domain name. So this makes it a little easier to link to GitHub pages without having to know their IP addresses. So for this DNS record, this value is going to be our subdomain. So we're going to set up 
www. And here, we're going to type in the domain name that we want to link to. So we're going to type in our GitHub username. For me, that's super simple dev dash tester one and then dot github dot io and finally for the ttl here we're still going to pick five minutes or 300 depending on your domain registrar and now we can save these changes and that will finish our setup so that is all the dns records that we need now you might be wondering why up here we didn't just use a cname record that's because we can't use a CNAME record with the base domain name. We can only use CNAME records with a subdomain like www. So don't worry, this is something that you just get used to as you work with DNS records more. Another thing you might notice is that we only set up records for the IP version 4 addresses. It's a good idea to also set up the IP version 6 addresses because we're moving towards that in the future. But for now, it's not mandatory, so I'll leave setting up IPv6 as an exercise. Now that we finished setting up our DNS records, the final step we have to do is to go back to our GitHub repository and tell GitHub pages which domain name we want to use. So let's go to a new tab here, and we're gonna go back to github.com. And make sure you log in, and then we're gonna click the top right here and go to your repositories, and then open the repository for our website, which is this one. And then we're gonna go into the settings, and then we're going to go to the Pages tab here. And finally, we're going to scroll down and we're going to tell GitHub Pages which domain name we want to use. So here's where we enter the domain name that we set up earlier. So for me, it's simonbaudev.com. And finally, we click Save. And that's it. Our domain name should now be set up correctly. Keep in mind that depending on your domain registrar, it could take about 24 to 48 hours for your DNS records to update. So if it doesn't work, you just have to be patient and then try it again later. Now, if you see this link here, you can right click it and then open link in new tab. Otherwise you can type your domain name in the URL at the top here. So now you can see that our domain name is properly set up for our GitHub pages website. The final thing we had to do is notice that it says not secure here. So we have to set up something called HTTPS. HTTPS is a security measure that encrypts all data flowing between our browser and the website. So this prevents an attacker from reading our data and potentially our passwords. To set up HTTPS in GitHub Pages, it's really easy. We're gonna go back to GitHub Pages and then we're gonna scroll down and we just need to check this checkbox. Now there is a process that GitHub Pages has to do behind the scenes to set this up so we just need to wait for this process to finish and then refresh the page. And now this checkbox should be enabled. So we can check it and that will enable HTTPS on our website. Now let's go to our website. We're gonna to go to the top here and at the front, we're gonna type HTTPS colon slash slash and press enter. And now you should see a lock icon here indicating that HTTPS is enabled. And that's pretty much it. In this section, we learned how to get a domain name from a domain registrar, and we learned how to link our domain name to our GitHub Pages website using DNS records, specifically the A record and the C name record. Here's some exercises to help you practice working with domain names and DNS records. Thanks for watching. We learned how to take a website that we created on our computer using HTML and CSS code and put that on the internet. We also learned how to get and set up a domain name for our website. If you're interested in more lessons, you can check out my HTML and CSS full course, or if you finish that, you can check out my JavaScript course. My name is Simon from supersimple.dev. I wanna make a tech career possible for anyone. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll see you in the next video.